Hey guys, this is Aaron Schober and Josh Lucas coming at you from Sword Carolina once again uh, with another Krim Pow video this week. Um, ooh, I know, yeah, yeah. I wanted to, to mention uh, one thing that we, we mentioned in passing last week but didn't really cover is that the Krim Pow to the hands where if Josh is pulling up into his ox guard, I can step well out of distance and crimp with my point to the hands. We actually demonstrated this, didn't go into a lot of teaching of it. Last week in our class, we actually opened with that type of cut. It just, to keep the video short, it didn't make it into the video. But don't, don't think that what we're showing is the only way that we would use the crimp pow. Like we shouldn't think that any technique is only gonna be used in one very precise manner or way. This, this is a crimp pow. You know, just as much as if I'm cutting against his sword, it's, it's the same cut, but done in a different scenario. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we also, are, we're not gonna cover one thing on this video with the crimp on that's actually doing a Dirk Vexon or cutting short with the crimp out because we have another video on that that we did a few months ago. So if you're interested in that, please go back and watch that and uh, like it and everything that come with that. Uh, but today we're doing actually counters from the crimp out. If you remember last time, when the uh, crimp out against the flats to control the person's sword, and the different attacks you could do from there, like the thrust and the cut uh, with the short edge. Uh, we're actually gonna do some counters to that. So if you've been crimped, now what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, we're crimped, run! Yeah, you know, just pull out and run. Uh, running is always an option. So we're gonna do some, some of that today. So if I'm attacking Josh with an Oberhau, we're gonna use the same setup as we used last week. I'm attacking Josh with an Oberhau. He's crimping against the flat of my sword. So from here, I'm not necessarily finished. The first thing we do is I'm actually going to try to get strong in this bind, like with the strong of my sword, and try to thrust into Josh's chest. All right, and when I say strong of the sword, I mean the, the closer half of my blade, because if I am weak in the bind, there's no way I can angle my, my point up to thrust him. I'd have to come down like this. If I'm on the strong of my sword, I can push my pommel down and bring my point up to allow that thrust to take place. And so, yeah, in this case, it is talking about the strong of the sword. That's, that's the first thing we do. Another thing we, uh, we determine with this is that we also wanna have pressure in there. We wanna have hard pressure because what Josh is thinking with his crew power is that he's using this as an opening to another attack. And so if I do no pressure on his sword, I may very well thrust him but he's just gonna come up and, and cut me at the same time and we end up with a double hit. Right. So I'm gonna be putting hard pressure upwards on his sword. And so if he, does, if he does nothing to stop my thrust, I'm gonna go ahead and do the thrust. If he follows through with one of his tacks, I already have hard pressure on the sword, which is gonna lead me up into my upper left hanging. And that's where we enter into the Edel Krieg or the High War. Noble War, High War. It's literally high, so I'm gonna go with High War, even though it doesn't sound as cool. It's so, not as cool. Anyway, so I'm coming in here. Josh is crimping against my flat. I'm coming in with hard pressure with the strong of my sword. So as he's, like go back into the, uh, the crimp, as he's coming up with the cut, my pressure is already up. I'm pulling up into my hang in here and it's giving me a really strong bind from here. So in this case, I'm pulling up into my left ox. Let's do that again. And it's, it's flowing very naturally with that hard upward pressure. So I'm, I'm staying on his sword. He's trying to leave my sword to cut me or thrust me in the head, either one. And I'm following his sword. This is kind of like knock rising. I'm, I'm following after and ending up in a position of dominance up top, up high. The, the reason that this actually works is when I crimp Aaron, when I go to cut, Aaron in the head, I, I'm going soft in the spine. I'm, I'm having to release some of the pressure, even though I'm staying on the sword, I'm having to release the pressure to pull my hands uh, to do that snapping motion. So if he's already strong, hard, if he's already pressing hard upwards, when I go soft, he'll automatically gain control of that bind and that puts him in the advantageous situation that he gets in. <laughs> So what happens if someone is overly defensive with their crimp pal? Uh, they, they've pushed you all the way down to the ground. 
they've got you, they're in a very defensive position. They're not threatening you, but it would not make a lot of sense for me to try and to commit to this push down, get underneath the sword. So what we could actually do in this situation is I can just pull straight back into my right ox and, and that will get my sword in between me and Aaron's sword. Uh, but also put me in immediate position to, to thrust him. Uh, the thing you want to remember in this situation is you want to pull your hands high to, to protect your head. And the other thing we noticed that, that really helped is not to try and pull back to a guard and then go high. Uh, it's actually better to stay on the sword and let it slide right up uh, the opponent's blade when you're pulling into that ox. So that, that puts you in that better position. So if Aaron tries to cut, me, I'm automatically protected there. This puts us in a situation where we can use the Edelkrieg. And what this is, if your opponent is trying to displace your thrust at your point, it allows you to, to easily flip under and attack any of his openings and, and attack much faster than he can defend against them. So the situation is, he's cut me down, I pulled up here. If he goes to defend against my point, it's very easy for me to go from opening to opening, as long as he's defending against my point, I can go faster than he can. In this case, from this scenario, having pulled up into my right ox to set up the, the thrusting, I can do the Edel Creek from here. I don't need to switch from side to side. I can do it all from here. And the more he just defends against my point, at some point, I'm going to get through and hit him if he doesn't take control of the fight. So as his role, like he is going to try to to uh, deflect my sword and get his point online and try to take control of the fight from him. Now the other scenario, I can also do the Edel Krieg from my left side. And this would be from the, the previous scenario where he has crimped my sword and then he's trying to come up and attack me from here. I am in Ox. If he ends up in the Edel Krieg here, I'm gonna keep attacking until I hit him somewhere. And once again, I can flip back and forth. You can do it as many times as you want. As long as he's on the defensive, you can just keep pressuring him. And eventually something will get through because you can't win a fight by just defending. All right, and we want to throw this bonus in here because throughout our videos, you know, we're talking about the Edel Krieg here. We're probably not going to do a full video on the Edel Krieg. Uh, just wanted to cover two things that I kind of like to do if I'm being Edel Krieg. It, it catches you off guard sometimes at first uh, when it happens, but once you see it and recognize it, there, there are some things that you can do to take the control back in the Edel Krieg. So if uh, we're here and Aaron is here, the first thing I want to try and do is cut on top of Aaron's sword right here, and that will gain me the control back in the bind. That'll put him back on the defensive, back in the knock. To, uh, to just cut on it. So, so once again, he's, he's here. I may defend once or twice until I get the feel and the side right, but once, you know, once I get on the side that I want to cut from, I can just cut back onto Aaron's sword. It pushes his sword offline and, and you know, puts my point right online there. If he's doing a Edel Edel Krieg, a, a very high Edel Krieg, because the Edel Krieg can go to the upper or the lower openings, but if he's keeping his sword very high, the next thing that you can do is you can actually come under the sword. So this will put you under the sword. It may set up something like a, a schnappen type of deal. Uh, it may, you may be able to, when you come under, you may be able to automatically wind and thrust, uh, but it is a proactive thing you can do instead of just defending, 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 and finally getting stabbed. So we just wanted to cover that. Interesting thing in the comments uh, below, tell us what you might do or, or what you do when you're being Edelkrieged and uh, we can compare some notes and maybe get some good ideas from it. So I think that pretty much covers our, our Krimpow and uh, Krimpow series. So we'll be coming at you next week. Uh, we're out from Sword Carolina.